Okay, if you watched my last video, um, I have a suspicion that my tube not being insulated is drastically impacting my planetary imaging. Now, I insulated my last 11-inch Edge HD, but I never got to use it while insulated on planetary before I sold it. Now that I've, I've got the new one and I'm using it on planetary imaging, you know, I'm noticing that every night around you know as soon as the sun goes down and starts to cool off the seeing just drops dramatically it's terrible i mean but it's not it's not the seeing it wouldn't be the seeing in this case if my suspicion is true so i think that the tube cooling off so much faster than the mirror or just the air inside of the scope is really crashing my seeing as soon as it starts to get dark so or crashing the performance of the telescope. So I'm at the auto parts store, and uh, I'm gonna I get those uh, those like reflective sun shields that are like quilted looking. Um, I'm just gonna buy one of those and wrap it around my telescope. That's what I did last time. But like I said, I never got to use it on planetary. So I'm gonna wrap that around my telescope today and see if that helps the performance of the telescope stay more stable. So. I will uh, wrap it around the telescope, we'll do some Jupiter tonight, it should be clear, and I will let you know how it goes. Okay, we're out in the observatory, it is cold. I found this at the auto parts store for $15. and. Uh, Gonna just go ahead and cut it with some scissors and wrap it around the, the scope tube. It's still got the original packing foam on it. It's pretty new. But uh, yeah, the object here is not to keep the telescope warm, right? The object is to stop one part of the telescope from cooling off so much faster than the rest of it. You know, we're not trying to hold heat in. We're just trying to stop drastic outdoor, te you know, ambient temperature changes from affecting... Um, you know the tube of the scope so dramatically as opposed to the mirror and corrector plate so we're just trying to keep things a little more equalized so i'm going to go ahead and cut this to shape and wrap it around the telescope and hopefully it's reflective multi-layered bubbliness will uh, stabilize the telescope a little bit and we will try it out tonight it's supposed to be clear it looks like crap now but hopefully it clears up tonight and we can test it out so the stuff is super easy to cut with scissors. You can even do that like cool wrapping paper slide through it. All right, I got the scope wrapped up, uh, ready to go tonight. I really s screwed up the position of the scope. <laughs> like I, I pushed it, and the, you know the clutch was almost loose. And that's something to keep in mind. If you set your scope up during the day, it's kind of warm out. It gets cold, and you didn't, you know, your clutches are just tight enough. Things might shrink enough that your clutch is going to come loose, and your scope might crash. Uh, so make sure they're tight enough, but not too tight. Okay, so we've got Jupiter in the frame, and we're looking at it, and this is as good at it as it has ever looked for me. We're getting some really nice, clear uh, views. I went ahead and stacked one, and yeah, that's that's as good as Jupiter's ever been for me. And uh, and that's the way it always goes at the beginning of the night. This is the very beginning of the night. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start capturing frames. The great red spot is just about to start coming around. So we're going to start capturing frames and hopefully get some nice motion um, as it traverses the visible surface of Jupiter. Hi. Yeah, there's you. Say hi. Yeah. So we're going, that's Jupiter too. Yeah. Very neat, huh? Um, so yeah, we're going to start capturing frames for animation and if the seeing if the condition of the view does not drop off dramatically like it seems to always do then i mean it's only anecdotal but we'll, we'll chalk that up to the fact that the say hi the telescope is insulated now and that it's keeping it from you know the the tube from cooling off quickly and creating big problems inside okay so we did the insulation test and this was the video we took before we insulated the telescope. And you can see in the evening, when the temperature is nice and stable, um, as soon as the sun starts to go down, 
the, the the quality is amazing it looks really good you can even see like a bunch of the detail on ganymede here it looks really good and then as soon as you know we get as soon as the sun goes down and it starts cooling off quality drops off precipitously and it looks basically like crap the rest of the night as the scope is you know as the temperature is dropping and dropping and dropping it never looks good it starts to look a little bit better later you know after about three hours after the temperature starts to level off for the night but uh yeah and it's been like this ever since um i've started doing planetary as soon as i start in the evening it looks amazing and then just garbage and so you know it um i insulated the scope because i thought that maybe you know and you know i did some homework about it and then people say that yeah the, the the tube is cooling off very quickly because it's aluminum and it's causing a bunch of thermal disturbance inside the scope that never goes away as long as the temperature is dropping coolly or temperature dropping quickly so if you insulate your tube it helps it it helps the the the, the whole scope cool off at a much more even rate and it will improve the performance dramatically and it did um this was the video i took the first night now now this is just anecdotal we, we gotta do it a few more times to make sure but you know it looks a lot better and you know there were a couple bad moments here where i think i was playing with the focus too much here and didn't end up getting good frames but like generally this is you know this is for as soon as the sun went down you know the first few hours of the night this was like two and a half hours and the quality is really good consistently and this was the first night after uh insulating the scope so we'll do a few more tests but the first result is very promising and uh we're excited now new problem fresh new hell uh the mirror flop seems really really bad the is the one when we were taking this video um i don't know what happened do you know what happened i don't know what happened say hi um the mirror was flopping way worse than it normally did and i tried to do a meridian flip so we could keep this going you could see this was only until like 8 30 in the evening and it stopped and i wanted to get the rest of it so i went out and tried to do a meridian flip quickly and the collimation was off really really bad on the other side of the meridian why that's that's unusual that's not normal i think maybe the focuser is loose maybe the mirror is coming loose so something is very wrong with the telescope okay okay i'm gonna i'm calming down we're not we're, we're not gonna panic um i'm gonna check the focuser i think maybe because it was strange as I was, you know, winding the focuser in the same direction, the, I, the mirror, the mirror shouldn't be flopping as it's going in the same direction, but the image would shift dramatically and then come back every time I moved the focuser. It's never done that before. So there's, hi, what's up? Yeah, that's you. Say hello. So there's a fresh new problem with the scope. I think when I installed the, the motor focuser, um maybe i didn't tighten it up enough and now that it's getting very cold maybe the screws are coming loose and the focuser is coming loose and now it's you know it's got a bunch of slop in it can i help you <laughs> yeah what do you want to do say hello um so maybe the focuser is coming loose <laughs> maybe the mirror is about to fall out of the thing i don't know but we have a new problem now that we've got the scope insulated and the performance is consistent through the evening uh, a fresh new challenger approaches and that, that's the way it goes there's always something some new bug to chase down but anyways uh clear skies insulate your scope it worked wonders for me you know if you've got something that's a little more thermally stable like a carbon fiber refractor you don't need to worry about it but this big 11 inch aluminum tube cools off way too fast causes big thermal currents inside the tube and ruins the performance anyways clear skies say bye 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 clear skies see you next time